Hi, I'm Pan Lim. I'm creative director of Rubbish Femzin. Uh, so Rubbish Femzin is a family zine. That's why we parodied on the word uh, fanzine to famzine. So it was started in 2013 uh, with my wife and two kids. Uh, back then, uh, it was in 2013. So the, the kids were pretty young then. Uh, my son was, I think, around 10, 9 to 10. And my daughter was like uh, 6 to 7 when we started this. So uh, in a blink of an eye, this is like in 2020, and then we are working on issue number 9. And my son is like going to turn 17 this year. And my daughter is already 14 this year. So... Uh, it's time has passed, but uh, we have not uh, forgotten why we started doing this. Uh, the reason behind it was really to uh, archive and document family memories. Um, also, because uh, I, I work pretty long hours, so I think uh, I do lose out a bit of spending time with them. So I will always think of uh, ways and means to grab them so that we can have projects together. And when we work on projects, you know, even if it's four hours straight over the weekend, it feels a lot more meaningful than just wandering the streets and not really documenting anything. And it also uh, was part of uh, pursuing something bigger as well. Uh, it was about, you know, kids being kids, they, you know, after they become maybe young adults, they will, you know, they will do their own things. But me and Claire, um, my wife, uh, we always have this uh, vision that you know, in their late 20s and early 30s, they will want to come home, you know. They want to spend more time with the with their folks. And by then, we should have already like a strong, hopefully by then we have issue 20. And then by then, it will be, doc, you know, archival materials for them to look at. And they will see, wow, last time we did this, we said that, uh, that did this, a mom did that, you know, things like that. Then that will truly be the... The, the full effect of Rubbish Femzine, actually. Now, actually, it's just more like a fun project that we work at home. But the bigger, bigger picture is really what will be uh, in maybe 10 years' time for them. Yeah, that, that's actually our ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, so for Rubbish Femzine, um, we, since issue one to now, we just, uh, now we're working on issue 10. Um, every issue touch on something that uh, matters to us as in matters to the family. Uh, it could sometimes uh, matter more to me, sometimes more to the kids. But it will be something that we'll sit down uh, and always have a, we'll brew a pot of tea and we will just talk about a particular topic. Do you want to go into this topic and whatnot? So issue nine uh, happens to talk about um, my and a bit of more me and my wife's fascination with chairs. So um, we have like a lot of chairs in the house um, that uh, we, we only have like six, five of us in a family with my, with my father-in-law and my helper, six of us. Uh, but we have like a lot of chairs, like maybe like 40 to 50 chairs in a house that uh, a lot are not being sat on, but we just collect chairs. We love chairs. And we thought, why not uh, dedicate issue nine to our obsession with chairs? And it's just like that. So for us, then we started uh, finding content that from, from our own family archive that suited this issue. Yeah. To be honest, uh, I would like to tell you, oh, we have this very structured brief and we are, we, are, we are very smart from the start. We know what we want. Actually, it's very organic working uh, with all my loved ones at home. We, are, we react to one another's uh, reaction to the project. So it's almost like uh, a bit like, you know, freestyle jamming at home. So sometimes... Uh, uh, of course, because I'm the designer of, of, of the zine, my, my wife writes, uh, my daughter occasionally writes for it as well, and both the kids contribute either by illustrations or photography. So I will be the one, after designing, I will present it to them, and I will get feedback, and after feedback, sometimes I, I change the entire sections, right? So, so their opinion is as important as my own as well. So, so this has been the, one of the fundamental building blocks of making rubbish femzine. It's really to, yes, I know I'm the working professional here. Uh, I'm the one that by right, I should call the shots, but I don't. So what I do is I want everybody to feel that they have a say in the project. Then, of course, if it's a no-no for me, I will usually say, okay, this, is, this, this I don't agree because I think this will really make the quality or the direction of the, this issue 
not in line with whatever we are doing, you know? So back back to the question about like, do I really have a proper brief? We know what we'll be talking about. We know it's, it's going to be about our possession with chairs. And we'll, we know that it will be uh, something fun because when, when we talk about chairs, immediately in our mind, we know, wow, we could do this. We could talk about our design heroes. Uh, maybe we should, you know, take up one of those IKEA stools and hack it into making it something else. And then something struck my mind. So that, that part was really a, a bit more me because I grew up uh, liking model kits a lot. And one really, really prominent brand was Airfix. Uh, and I couldn't afford a lot of it because I was, when we were young, um, toys wasn't like the main priority in the family. So when I was working on this project, suddenly I thought about air fix. Then I thought about, wow, why don't we do a chair fix? So actually, you know, you just add a, 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 a two more alphabets in front and you can actually make a, a simple cardboard model kit of a chair. So then from there, it started from there. Then one thing led to another. And we know that no matter how the essence of rubbish fanzine should be still about the family. It shouldn't be like, in the end, my obsession with chairs and what's that got to do with the family, right? So it will always always come back to the family. Family is the starting point and the ending point of rubbish fanzine. So so what happened is uh, we for us, um, when we first decided to... So what happened was before rub, rubbish fanzine came about, uh, in 2011, uh, we actually started a family art collective first. So because I realized and found, we, we just kept observing and we realized that uh, when my son Ren was growing up, he just loved to doodle on anything. So when we are out eating, uh, he would doodle on um, like tray liners. Instead of playing with iPads, he'll be, my wife would bring out pencils, color pencils, he'll be doodling. So we thought if maybe we should, you know, help him. Uh, push him in the direction where he loves to do that. Let's just encourage him since we are from a creative family, right? So, so from there, we started uh, an art collective. And after a while, I realized maybe what's nice is maybe we should do this more often. So we give ourselves a, a deadline. Like we, if we publish a zine, means that there'll be one, there'll be two, there'll be three. So constantly you are, you have a deadline. Constantly you have a deadline. So that's how it, it was started. And since issue one, when we wanted to start it, my daughter then came to me and said, but daddy, who would want to read this book? What are you going to do with these books? Uh, what does it matter to people? So my, my one thing that I shared with her was, actually in life, it doesn't matter who will want to read your book, but if you are happy with what you're doing, probably people can feel it, they can sense it, and they might also be happy with, with your project, and probably they might want to support your project. So it actually started that way. So um, the, the essence of uh, Rubbish Ramzin is a lot of uh, handwork. We like to do our project with a lot of handwork. So because of that, we cannot do anything more than 300 copies. So before, when we are in production mode, the whole house will be cleared of things and the whole house will be filled with Rubbish Ramzin's components. Then we will be seated in a, in, a, in, in a line of four and the kids will be part of this factory line. So I'll be doing portion A, I'll pass to her, pass, then pass to my son, then pass to my wife, and we'll go. Then there'll be one part of it, then we'll sit down together, then we'll do the next component. So this whole process has become something like, uh, become second nature, you know? So, so I, I mean, that also adds on to the excitement of every zine. Of course, sometimes when the, the putting together is a, a little difficult, it's also uh, quite, stressful for me because I want of that certain quality. So, so you see, um, we have seen, so, so me and Claire have always uh, understood that uh, this whole thing is like a family experiment. You can only do it once. There's no turning back, like saying, okay, uh, let's rewind back and let's do this a different way. We have always known that this is just a one-time family experiment. As long as the, the, the foundation of this experiment is built based on love, I think it's fine. So what happened was, it started, of course, with the kids being very passionate. Then now, uh, when they are older, my son is in, uh, a teenager now. Of course, he would want to hang out with his, with his friends. They want to go fishing. They want to go skating. And I say, just go. So in the end now, for the last three issues, the way I've approached it was, because I could foresee all this coming, so the, the approach was a bit different. So now I treat them like, 
almost like a freelance collaborators. So I will give them the brief. So whenever we have the ideas ready, maybe me and Claire will say, okay, uh, please, for in particular for the chair issue, issue nine. So what we told them was, uh, okay, there's a brief for you to draw this. This uh, we have twenty chairs to draw, but tell me which are the five that you like, and we will shortlist the final ten for that matter. So they, they get involved in selecting one or two, but then in the end, both of them, uh, my son and daughter, will get to draw them. Then I will put them into one section in the zine. Then, so this will be their involvement. Then there will be a section where we actually take a IKEA, two IKEA stools and we hack it into another chair. And for that one particular, uh, I got them to help me so-called cut it up. But in the end, it shows that our skills weren't good enough, so I sent it out to a carpenter. But what they did was they did all the spray painting work. Nice. So no matter how, I'll bring them back into the project as collaborators. If not, then just as someone who worked on it, then uh, the memories will still be there. But I think in good time to come, I under I foresee their involvement getting lesser, which is why um, we have already started a different approach. So issue nine is a bit... Uh, it's kind of uh, very quite. It's quite clear that their involvement is getting lesser, not like before. So this is in our pipeline of planning. Yeah, uh, I think we internally we have discussed about it. I do. I do not think that uh, we will stop at issue ten, right, or eleven. But of course, if unforeseen circumstances like, uh, for me, I think when I create work, it really comes from the heart. So if I don't feel that I enjoy working on it, I will never force myself to do it. But if I enjoy doing working on something, I might work through the night through until morning. And I don't feel tired, right? So for me, it's, it's quite simple. So if, if I feel that this project is getting a bit, um, like maybe it doesn't feel authentic anymore. You know, the word is being authentic. If you feel that it's not authentic anymore, then stop working on it. Ask yourself, what would this project be if it's more authentic? Then I will prob probably shift the focus more that direction. So far, uh, for the kids to come in as collaborators only and just to throw them a brief to think of some ideas and get back to me, I'm still okay with it. So I still feel that it's pretty authentic. Uh, and what do you expect? I mean, they are teenagers, they are going out and whatnot. They are not at home. Last time, we spent our weekends doing this. Now weekends, they spend their time going out with their friends. What do I want to do about that? I can't. So I will work it in another way. I spend more time with my wife. Then we sit down and talk more. We think we brainstorm more and we just work together more. It's still part of this family project. It's just that the kids come in as collaborators. Mm. So, yeah, it will change. And I think it will change further because by then they will be working. They will enter work life. And what will happen to the zine? I don't know. But one thing for sure, uh, we will keep it authentic, I guess. Yeah. To be frank with you, uh, every issue is an every issue is an obstacle. Uh, for, for that matter, like for instance, first issue was a little, I won't say easy, but because it's, since it's the first issue, I don't have to worry about second or third, right? So I launched the zine in a rubbish bag. So, okay, one down. We, we did a different way of doing and And the first zine was based on our very first family travel as far to our favorite city, Tokyo and Kyoto. So we we compiled all our, all our memories there and we put into this first zine. Second zine was... So when our, some of uh, our readers read our first zine, they, they were asking us, um, are you going to do every issue about a different country? I said, no, 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 no. It's not going to be a different country. But because of that question, it gave me a, a, an idea, right? That I better do something remotely off that you know that I'm going to talk about anything. So then the second issue came about with, uh, with the 50th wedding anniversary of my in-laws. So they were celebrating their 50th anniversary and we dedicated issue two to them. It's titled Till Death Do Us Part. So the whole second issue was based on that. Third issue was based on our family memories. Fourth issue was based on Singapore 50th birthday that came with a flower presser that came with real specimen of dried flowers and, and leaves. Then fifth, fifth was about my father that passed away that the kids did not meet before. So it was like a tribute to my dad. Sixth issue was our favorite food in Singapore. So we go around eating in Singapore and we just took photos and we just collect. Seventh issue was for my love for film photography. It was our issue for our love for 80s music. And we actually made the kids 
pick up instruments. Like my my son picked up the bass. My my daughter took to the vocals. My wife picked up the keyboard. And for me, I've always been uh, playing music all the time. That's why you can see some guitar stuff behind me. So I I, I love guitars a lot. So we recorded our first single together. We pressed it into a seven inch vinyl, and we put it into issue number eight. And issue number nine was about a chair, about chairs, right? So every issue is full of obstacles because you will always uh, have things that we have not done before somehow, but we are doing it for the first time. And while I have high expectations, I do not tell the kids I have high expectations. I don't want them to think that I'm just going to make sure that everybody work to, de- to work to death, right? But I will, by the side, try to make sure and encourage and trying to make sure that the thing come out, come out okay. So a bit of that. So it's a lot of uh, managing expectations, a lot about uh, making it authentic. There's also a, a particular process that is uh, pretty hardcore when we do our stuff. For, ex- for example, if, if I can, I can show you an example. Okay, so. so for instance, uh, so for this, uh, this is how... For issue nine, there was quite a, a couple of problems. So for me, uh, I'm not sure. Can you see it clearly here? Yeah. But you can see that the edges, mm-hmm. they were all old and crinkled. So what I do is I will take the box, I will crump, I will, I will make sure that it looks uh, mishandled. I will, I will make sure that they are dog eared I even take a file, and I'll file off the print to make that it looks looks aged. So every copy is hand weathered by me. So there are like 300 copies. I just sit down there every morning. I just do. Vroom. So um, those are things that um, matters to me because I, I always uh, like um, my readers. When they hold the zine, they'll feel like, oh my God, this guy is crazy or what? He file every single book or file every single cover. Then later from within, he'll be looking at, oh my God, this guy put in every page, this and that, you know, things like that. So I, I kind of like a bit of that kind of uh, extremity to the projects that we do because I think, because I imagine if I'm a reader and I'm buying a book and if I open and I see this, I'll be delighted, right? So same thing, I will do things to, I will, I'll do things that based on my own imagination, like I think, okay, I think I would like this. I just go and do it. Then of course, uh, we came up with a lot of mock-ups for the chair. So some of these are like the first few protos for the so-called the chair picks. Um, it actually started off as a kind of like a lounge chair thing. Mm. So it started out by a lounge chair thing. Then in the end, it became uh, a bit of this. Because I really love mid-century style. So I combined a few of my favorite designers and I just, you know, um, make it work in a way. So things like that. So I think for challenges, for every issue, there will be challenges. But uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, no, I'm I'm not um, I'm not so called um, naive to think that there's no surprises. So for every issue, I know there will be surprises. So I'm just I'm just there waiting for it. Yeah. Um. Actually, uh, success is um, is a is something that I think everyone defines it differently. So for us, uh, we are always happy that uh, we launch something together. So during the launch. Uh, whether we hit a very good sales on the first day or not, doesn't really matter. But it's more like four of us together, we sit down and we look at the product, we're happy with it. So that's to me the first success. Second is more like, um, do I feel that the project was executed authentically? If we feel that we have done a good job, like there are some issues which I won't mention here, that after the project is launched, I look at it and say, damn, I should have done it this way, it will be more authentic. But you know, you will only know after it's been done and you learn from that experience, right? So now moving forward, I will always ask myself, is it goes back to family? Is it authentic? And will I do it again the same way? And if it, if it does fit all these few, few points, I believe, yes, it should be on the right track. But whether it's successful or not, I don't know. But somehow, if we receive uh, messages on, on, on Instagram or Facebook from our readers and... It could be from Singapore. They could come from as far as a, uh, as as Lithuania or what. Uh, it makes us feel good, as in we feel like we feel uh, charged to let's do a better one, the next one, you know. So to me, that's that's what fuels us, lah. But whether that is considered success, I'm not sure because I think 
success is a very big word uh, and we are only producing 300 copies. I, I, I'm not sure is that considered successful, but it's just that we just do what we want to do and as long as you feel authentic about it. So submitting work to DNAD is mm, got nothing to do with rubbish fanzine. It's got to do with, you know, when you're a student in design school and you look at what's out there in the industry and you tell yourself which is that one award that matters to you. And I'm very happy to say that since the late 90s till now, DNAD is still my most preferred. I mean, I'm, I'm really making a statement here, but it's the most preferred award for me, at least. Yeah, so, um, I mean, industry friends might disagree with me, but I feel they have always stood for something more authentic as well. Even for this current judging for books, magazines and whatnot, they judge on the actual physical copy of the zine and not through JPEGs and whatnot. I mean, how could you judge a book from JPEG? Come on. So if you ask me why do I submit to the DNAD, it's not because of uh, rubbish from zine or not. It's just that I know that if I were to submit to DNAD, it will be a true reflection of where the work, their work stand in the world at that point in time. So because every year the judges are different, right? But we know that the quality is pretty much always, always there. So sending to DNAD will, will be, in a way, a benchmark to at least tell myself, okay, am I, you know, as a, I mean, I'm 47 this year. Next year, very early, I'll be 48. I still want to know that uh, I still have a, a, a bit of me going on that I can still do some uh, design work that hopefully can connect with people of this generation, maybe. So, yeah, so a bit of everything. But, yeah, submitting to DNAD has got nothing to do with why, but it's, it is the award to submit to, yeah.